<coughs> well, thank you for the introduction, and, and I am also very, very glad to be here and to be to be able to escape from France yesterday and to avoid the Skype nightmare today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thank you to all of you for still being here for this last talk of the last session and for hearing something maybe exotic as compared to what you heard before. I'm not going to be talking about vaccines to cancer or to infectious disease. It's going to be about infectious, uh, sorry, <laughs> neuroimmunology and Alzheimer's disease. Um, so as you probably know, Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease characterized by two types of uh, pathological lesions, which are basically accumulation of pathological protein. So basically, a beta peptide with a very short peptide of 42 amino acids, which is extracellular and intracellular accumulation of hyperphosphorated tau protein. So these two types of pathological proteins com contribute to um, altered functionality of the neuron, altered uh, uh, viability of the neurons, and contribute to, 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 to the uh, clinical sign of the disease. And associated to this uh, pathological protein, uh, a third feature of the disease is the development of chronic neuroinflammation, which is basically mediated by microglia and astrocytes, which are glial cells in the brain. And the role of this neuroinflammation is, is very complex in the disease, um, with both beneficial and detrimental impact, which have been described, and something which seems to evolve along the course of disease progression. Um, and uh, again, it's much more complicated than only like M1 and M2-like uh, myeloid cells responses. And it looks more like this now, basically like based on single cell analysis studies. Uh, groups have been describing many different populations with different stages and activation of cytokines, interferon response gene, class 2 upregulation, and it's probably even more complicated. And, and depending on the type of pathological protein, either extracellular or intracellular, uh, it seems that we have different kind of functional profile of microglia. And, uh, and to make it even more complex, uh, these activated microglia uh, have the capacity to influence and impact on the functionality of astrocytes, which also seem to also have different profile, uh, different capacity and different type of functional profile. So basically, different profile of uh, neuroinflammatory cells, um, differences along the course of disease progression, um, which may have beneficial and detrimental impact. Um, so something that you've seen before, so basically these microglia and astrocyte responses are really innate immune responses uh, from the CNS. So basically microglia are the macrophages of the, of the, of the CNS. Uh, astrocytes, although they are not innate cells, they do have like innate like functionalities for some uh, part of their, uh, of their function. And so this is the most characterized uh, involvement in, in neurodegeneration. And, and more recent data suggests that adaptive immunity and uh, in the form of B cell responses and T cell responses also seems to play a role in the pathophysiology of, of AD. And uh, the very first arguments actually came from, from the very first studies of vaccination in, in, in murine model of, of, of the disease, uh, basically about 20 years ago. Uh, people have been vaccinating uh, models of AD-like amyloid pathology with a beta with the idea of boosting immunity to try to get rid of this pathological protein. So basically they induced antibodies and, and T cells to a beta, although nobody looked at T cells at that time. Uh, so that was very efficient at uh, reducing the accumulation of a beta and at preventing uh, memory loss in these models. And so the field moved very quickly to the first clinical trial in human, um, which was basically the same thing, vaccinating against a beta. Uh, it was started very quickly, like one year after the, the publication of these um, preclinical studies. And it was stopped also very quickly due to uh, the occurrence of uh, severe side effects in the, in the form of meningoencephalitis in 6% of the patient. And, and some uh, studies afterward suggested that these side effects were attributed to vaccine-induced T cell responses to, to, to a beta. And as a consequence, the field moved to like some kind of second generation immunotherapy, which are basically exclusively based on, on trying to, 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 to take advantage of anti-A beta antibodies without inducing any A beta specific T cell responses. So either adoptive uh, passive transfer of transfer of antibodies or vaccination strategies with very short peptides to avoid any induction of 
T cell to, to, to A-beta. And, and that resulted in kind of neglecting, neglecting any research on T cell responses in the field of AED. Um, but, but in parallel, some studies suggested that it's probably much more complicated and that T cells are not only detrimental. And, and some studies in mouse models suggested that depending on the subtype of, of CD40 cell to, to a beta TH1, TH2, and maybe TH17, uh, there could be some either detrimental or beneficial effect. So that was based on uh, like, uh, artificial induction of, of this kind of subpopulation. So different role of different T cell population in, in mouse model. Um, in the human, uh, increased frequencies of A-beta have been observed uh, in elderly and in AD patients independently on, on, on any vaccination. So basically, spontaneous rise of T cell responses to A-beta with age and, and the disease. Um, increased infiltration of T cells has been observed in the brain of, of the patients and in, in the mouse model. So this is not a huge infiltration. This is not multiple sclerosis. We're not talking about an autoimmune disease, but there's definitely more T cells infiltrating the brain. This T cell infiltration, um, uh, either in the brain or, or, or in the CSF, um, correlates with some pathological markers of the disease, like correlation with, with the extent of um, pro pathological tau protein, correlation with some marker of atrophy by MRI, and, and correlation with some cognitive scores um, uh, um, in, the, in the patient. Uh, uh, and finally, I think that all those strong arguments come from accumulating data in genome-wide association studies, which show a link be in, in polymorphism in genes associated with antigen processing and presentation to T cells and the risk of, of developing AD. So basically, this is suggesting that T cell responses seem to play a role in the pathophysiology. It doesn't tell us if it's beneficial or, or detrimental. It's probably complex depending on the type of, of, of the responses. And this is really what we are interested in, uh, in the lab, so def defining the role of these different T-cell population and, and hopefully identifying uh, immunotherapeutic opportunities. So as a first step, we were interested in trying to better understand what, what, what are the factors modulating the extent of T-cell responses to a beta. And, and with the idea of trying to mimic the genetic heterogeneity we have in the population of patients, like the patient who went through the first vaccination trial, we, we did some vaccination studies in different strain of mice uh, with different genetic background, different MHC context. And we looked at the extent of T cell responses. And as you can see, we, we saw strong heterogeneity with very quick responders, strong responders, and responders which are in between. Uh, part of this heterogeneity, of course, was related to differences in the MHC, differences in the capacity to bind a beta-derived epitope. Um, again, a beta is very short, it's 42 amino acids, so there is not that many epitopes that we can derive from 42 amino acids, and that was already described and we confirmed this, and depending on the MHC, different capacities to present epitopes. Um, uh, but we wanted to, to know if, if there could be other factors modulating this extent of T cell responses. And, and, and so we took advantage of one very weak responder and one strong responder strain. Um, and, and as you can see here, the B6 strain is weak responder to A beta with the epitope corresponding here. Uh, HGL is a very strong responder with another epitope. And when we looked at B6 mice congenic, congenic for the MHC of the strong responder, we still found very weak responses, which was telling us that independently on, on the MHC background, genetic factors um, uh, other than MHC may be modulating, downmodulating T cell responses to a beta. And I don't have time to go through the data and, and basically to make a long story short, we, we of course looked at T regs and we found that actually there seems to be Intend individual viability in the potency of T-Rex to control T-cell responses to a beta. This is not all global viability to, of T-Rex responses to any antigens because based on immunization studies where we did T-Rex depletion, we observed differences in the T-cell responses to a beta, whereas responses to other CNS antigens were, 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 were not different. So basically, depending on the background of individuals, here we are talking about mice, of course, we do have different potencies of T-Rex to control T cells to a beta. And, and, and using a model of amyloid pathology, we, we also found that T-Rex seems to 
inhibits spontaneous T cell responses to a beta that do arise um, along the, the progression of the disease. And so of, then, of course, we were interested in, in trying to look at the impact of these T-Rex on disease progression. And, and what we've done is to, to look at uh, the impact of depletion of regulatory T cells. So basically, using a mouse model of amyloid pathology, we did like transient early T-Rex depletion for two months. And then we didn't do anything. And, and, and we looked at the impact on, on the kinetics of disease progression. And as you can see here, when we looked at the cognitive function, this is a way of looking at memory in, in, in mice. When we looked at seven months, so basically seven months is one month before the expected age of onset of the cognitive deficit. And as you can see here in, in white, the white type and disease animal at that age are still similar. So it's too early to see cognitive deficits. But when we look at the disease animal where we depleted the T-Rex, we already see cognitive deficits. So basically, early T-Rex depletion accelerates the onset of cognitive deficits. Then, of course, we looked at the, Im the impact of T-Rex depletion on the extent of uh, a beta accumulation. We couldn't see significant differences uh, in the total area covered by a beta in the brain. We looked at the range and plaque size range. Again, no differences and no differences in the total overall amount of a beta, either soluble or insoluble. So basically, earlier cognitive deficits, but no differences in the accumulation of pathological protein. And when we looked at the neuroinflammatory responses, so basically microglia, we actually did see a very significant decrease in the number of microglia associated with uh, amyloid deposition based on your generic marker or activation marker. Um, and so we then we, we, we've done some general uh, analysis to try to have a broader view of uh, the impact of this immune modulation on, on what's going on in the brain during uh, the disease. So basically, we first compared Y type and, and, and disease animal to identify the set of 668 genes which were like disease rela related. As you can see, don regulated genes uh, relates to neurotransmitter receptors, neuronal activity dendrite development, synapse maturation, well, a lot of things that make sense to be done regulated in the course of a neurogenative disease. In contrast, a lot of activated, overactivated genes relates to neuroinflammatory responses, uh, microglia and astrocyte activation. Um, so basically, this is like the, the disease profile. And then we compare this profile with the profile of genes in animals which were depleted or not of T-Rex. And we found that among the disease-related profile, 54 genes were inversely or differentially expressed in open T-Rex depletion. Um, here are the functions associated with this, either like uh, CNS-related function or cardiovascular system or immune-related function. Um, so basically, depleting the T-Rex impact of, seems to impact on different pathways involved in, in, the, in, the, in the pathology. And we, we focus on, on two of these genes which were uh, interesting to us. The first one was SAM68, which is basically a protein involved in some kind of synaptic plasticity related processes, which was down regulated when we depleted the T-Rex and which again fits with an acceleration of, of onset of cognitive deficits. And the other one was USP18, which was up-regulated upon T-Rex depletion. And USP18 is a kind of down modulator of signaling pathway downstream of type 1 interferon receptors, um, and, and which have, has been shown to be expressed in microglia and, and, and to be regulated upon microglia activation. And considering the role of type 1 interferon in the modulation of, of microglia activation, uh, basically overall, overall our data suggests that in some way T-Rex seems to to restrain the, 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 the inhibition of type 1 different pathway and which seems to be um, related to maintaining microglial responses in a kind of beneficial profile. So our T-Rex depletion data suggested that um, T-Rex seems to be beneficial as when we deplete the T-Rex, we accelerate the disease and we seems to reduce the, the beneficial profile of microglia. So the idea was to boost the T-Rex. And, and, and we took advantage of, of 
uh, the strategy you probably heard about, which is low dose IL2, and which um, based on the fact that effector T cells and T regs have different uh, sensitivity to I IL2 and different signaling pathway activated downstream of IL2. As you can see here, so basically T regs are more sensitive to IL2. They are higher activation of STAT5 mediated signaling pathway. A and it was shown previously that low doses of IL2 uh, specifically amplify t regs without amplifying effector uh, t cells and this is something which has been tested in the clinics in different autoimmune diseases and as, as well as in graft versus host diseases and which works and which is safe um, so basically we took advantage of this strategy and, and we confirmed that in our animals both white type and, and ad animal we specifically amplify the t regs and when we treat with low dose IL2 without significantly impacting um, effector T cells in the blood, in the spleen and cervical lymph nodes. And of course, we looked at the impact on, on, on disease progression. And here we, we're looking at the behavior and, and the, the memory two months after the expected age of onset. And as you can see here in white, uh, the untreated animals show strong cognitive deficits at 10 months. Whereas the IL-2 treated animal, low dose IL-2 treated animals, behave like wild type animals, uh, suggesting that early and chronic amplification of T-regs seems to delay, maybe delay or, or uh, avoid the development of, of cognitive deficits. Again, no significant impact on, on, on amyloid deposition, but contrary to what we have for the depletion, we observed enhanced frequencies of microglia around amyloid deposits. So really the, the mirror effect as compared to what we have in the, in the T-reg depletion. Yeah, I think I'm really late. <laughs> um, uh, we have the same kind of profile for astrocytes. It was confirmed by another study, and we are now looking at more detailed phenotypic characterization of astrocytes, and we all can also look and find some kind of immunological synapse between T cells and astrocytes. Um, so basically, first summary, um, inter-individual variability in the capacity to trigger or control T cell responses to a beta, CD4 T cell responses to a beta, seems to be uh, significant. T regs contribute to modulate the kinetics of disease progression and cognitive deficit without impacting on, on the quantity of, of pathological protein. A and this impact of T-Rex seems to go at least partially through the modulation of, of the new inflammatory response uh, and amplification of early amplification of T-Rex using low dose IA2 treatment seems to be efficient for restoring cognitive function. Well, so yes, five minutes or? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so everything was about CD40 cells, what about CD8 T cells? So we looked at CD8 T cell responses to a beta using predictive analysis. In silico, we found that it makes sense to look at CD8 T cells to, to a beta in humans. There is potential epitopes. Uh, in the mouse, we had to use a trick to enhance the, basically the affinity of potential epitopes to make it uh, able to bind. So basically, we, we identified epitopes that can trigger CD8 T cell response to a beta. Um, this CD8 epitope is presented in the brain of disease animal, as you can see here. So this is an early spot assay using microglia from white type or disease animal, and T cell responses induced by vaccination recognize the microglia. Um, and basically this is um, uh, re uh, related to enhanced frequencies of CD8 T cells in, vac in the brain of, of vaccinated mice, but we cannot see any sign of autoimmune neuroinflammation, which was suggesting that uh, basically, CD8 T cell responses to a beta doesn't seem to be detrimental. What about tau pathology? Um, tau pathology is characterized also by neuroinflammatory responses, production of chemokines, which are known to attract T cells. This is related to selective CD8 T cell infiltration in the brain in the hippocampus. We can find this also in patient. And um, basically, this is another memory test. Uh, as you can see here, two animals are not able to discriminate between known and unknown environment, but when we deplete the T cells, total T cells, we restore the cognitive functions similar to wild type animals. This is related to uh, total disappearance of T cell infiltration in the brain of disease animal and reduced neuroinflammation. So in this case, 
reduced neuroinflammation seems to be associated with beneficial impact on cognition. And again, no impact on, on pathological protein. So for CD8, a beta specific CD8 doesn't seem to be detrimental, although they can be recruited in the brain of diseased animal. Um, uh, innate neuroinflammation in the context of tau pathology seems to trigger CD8 uh, T cell infiltration, which seems to be detrimental and, and contribute to promote cognitive deficits, uh, and again, independently of, of an impact on tau phosphorylation. Um, just very quickly, what's going on in human? So we are, of course, trying to address the same question in human. So we have a cohort of patients uh, which have uh, TEP imaging for amyloid deposition and neuroinflammation and a two years follow-up. Um, we have like two groups of patients, slow decliners, fast decliners. No difference in the overall amount of amyloid deposition, which is not surprising. It's known to be very early uh, accumulation and then it's kind of a plateau. Uh, and when we looked at the inflammation in, in the brain of this patient, actually the slow decliner have higher inflammation, which fits with our data in, in, in the T-Reg model uh, with like beneficial neuroinflammation. And when we do a, a follow-up of this patient, um, we do a second PET scan for neuroinflammation, we actually do see that slow decliner have one profile with like high and sustained neuroinflammation, whereas the fast decline of patient have another profile with, with initially low neuroinflammation and more evolving neuroinflammation. And of course, we are now looking at, at, at uh, the immune profile of this patient and, and we have really interesting data and what well, I can't share with you yet, uh, because it's still under uh, an embargo with the industry. Um, but basically, we, we are trying to, to, to validate uh, what we observe in, in, the, in the mouse model. So conclusion. TREX contribute to modulate kinetics of disease progression by affecting neuroinflammatory responses. Um, CD8 T cell seems to promote um, cognitive deficits um, and potentially detrimental innate neuroinflammation. Different subtypes of T cell population play different roles in response to amyloid and pathology. And I think importantly, viability in the capacity to either trigger or, or, or modulate these response, T cell responses to either A beta or tau may have significant impact on, on, the, on the rate of disease progression in, in the patient. And overall, this is suggesting that therapeutic uh, modulation of T cell targeting approaches could be, could be efficient in the, um, in the patient. And we are now uh, moving forward to the clinic with a low dose IL2 approach in, in AD patient and also we have potential interest of, of cellular immune biomarker as prognostic marker. Um, I'm going to skip the, whoop, sorry, the um, uh, schematic uh, summary. Just here to mention the people who contributed to this study in the lab, also in uh, other lab in, in our research center, our con uh, other collaborators and, and funding uh, agencies. And thanks you for listening to me and I'm happy to take questions, if any.